Okay, it's day 77, and Task Force told me, you know, you just need to walk Imran's path. So you're here at Longworth Cafe. You can threaten a few people with kidnapping, right? You're going to go in there. You're going to threaten a few employees with kidnapping. All right, you're going to come this way. We'll walk down the hall here and get a uh, soda. Elevator to your office. Courtyard entry. <clears throat> Dunkin' Donuts. We'll keep going here. Cold outside today, very cold. So what if you did have a drugs for guns operation at the Clinton Foundation? What if Eric Braveman told somebody about that? What would happen then? Hmm, what if it was the Coast Guard and the Navy that was doing it? Would you have an emergency meeting at the White House? In the Situation Room? Would you have employees that were Coast Guard and Navy summoned quickly into the Situation Room, 9.45 at night? Would that happen? Well, that's what did happen. Uh, we don't know if it was because Braverman said there was guns for drugs, but we do know that that happened. Look at the night of March 12th, 2015. Eight days after, or four days, only four days after that famous uh, uh, Podesta email about Eric Braverman. And then, of course, he says maybe I Over Magaziner is the leak. Maybe um, that was it. Down the escalator, we're into the uh, Braverman office building. We're ready to do some backups or transfer some money to Pakistan. So, um, yeah, Podesta sends out this email to near attendance saying, it's either Braverman, I or Magaziner, Mr. Half-Weight, Quarter-Weight Drugs to Africa, or it's um, Doug Mann, Mr. Diplomatic Passports. Let's go have some fun. So we're gonna check out uh, March 12th. We're gonna go to the White House now. We're gonna check that out.